Well, welcome everyone to our first full year results, which I'm very pleased to be able to present to you today. Uh, the last year has certainly been an eventful one uh, in many aspects, but I'm happy to report a very positive one for the group uh, in terms of our financial performance and the, and the progress that we've made. When we set out in 2016 uh, with the vision to make this very large, very complex uh, e-commerce market more accessible for brands of, of all sizes. Uh, and since that time, we've made significant progress, especially over the last uh, year uh, towards that vision. We now have a presence in three countries. The team numbers uh, approximately 140 people. We have a growing number of uh, services and solutions that we uh, are offering our partners and also for our own brands. Uh, and this is all being powered by our proprietary Nomad technology platform that we've built to uh, which is integrated with all the necessary touch points for, for e-commerce in this market. In March of this year as well, we completed our uh, listing onto the Apex segment of the Aquis growth market in an oversubscribed IPO raising £17 million. In that IPO, we laid out uh, a number of objectives uh, for the business. Uh, the first is the continued investment into our nomad technology. The second into international expansion also into uh, enhanced operational capabilities uh, and also investments into strategic brand assets and uh, consumer brand companies. Uh, on the first objective, I'm very pleased with the response that we're seeing from both SME and large enterprises. Um, we expect to have uh, some announcements to make in the next quarter about uh, some of those some of those clients coming on board with our new Nomad te te Checkout technology, uh, both in Europe and in Northeast Asia. Northeast Asia, through our, our expansion to the Northeast Asia, through our newly formed entity and office in Japan, represents a huge opportunity for us. Uh, it's a market with huge demand uh, already from Chinese consumers, and the ability to offer our technology and solutions into this market is, is a very exciting one for us. Uh, in May, we complete the acquisition of the complementary health brand, uh, Zeta West, uh, that's already uh, integrated into the business very well and growing within our ecosystem. And we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, later on. The development of Nomad technology continues at pace uh, and increasing in terms of the scale, uh, the reach and capacity, uh, the number of orders processed, uh, the number of product lines uh, handled by the platform has increased significantly in the last 12 months as well. Uh, FY21 was a very strong period for us, uh, significant in terms of our financial metrics as well. Revenue growth from 6.8 million to 20.6, an improving gross margin, and a heavily oversubscribed IPO, which we raised 17 million at that, plus 3.1 million follow on investment from one of Chime's leading express logistics companies, SF Express. So 20, just over 20 million pounds raised versus our initial target of. 10 million pounds. Eva is just going to take us through some of the, the financial numbers now, uh, and then I'll talk more about the overall business, uh, the market and environment, uh, strategy, and outlook. Thank you, David. Um, hi, everyone. Um, Tim and I are extremely pleased to have completed our listing on Aquas, raising 17 million pounds in March this year. The group revenues have increased 200% um, with like for like revenues increasing from 6.8 million last year to 14.8 million this year. The group reports revenue on three segments, uh, distribution, brand ownership, and nomad technology. Distribution sales are off-platform B2B sales to UK retail and Chinese platforms on a wholesale model, and direct-to-consumer sales on Amazon. These sales are typically on a low margin. Um, brand ownership is revenues uh, which relates to the sale of our own brand products, um, Probar7. And Nomad Technology revenues are revenues generated on our platform um, through our three distinct um, technology solutions. The margins on brand ownership and Nomad Technology are typically higher than distribution. So as you can see, um, as we move from low margin distribution sales to higher margin Nomad Technology and direct consumer sales, our margins have improved. So our margins in 2019 was around 35% um, in 2020. The margins was 48% and that's improved to 62% this year. We do expect this to remain consistent in the coming year. Um, David will go through um, the brand ownership and nomad technology segments in more detail later on. 
So during the year, the group was awarded a £5.8 million government contract for the supply of PPE. Um, the overall profit for that was £2 million. Excluding this contract, the significant increases in revenues are largely driven by nomad technology platform revenues, um, including high levels of social selling, uh, the growth of online sales during the first lockdown, and the increase in revenues generated from our own brand, ProBar7, in China. Selling and distribution expenses have also increased as a result of marketing spend. And as a percentage of revenue, admin costs are um, down. And this is a result of our operational efficiencies and the group's ability to scale the current operations as top line revenue grows. As a result of the IPO, um, the group has moved from a net debt position of 5.8 million to a net cash position of 11.6 million in March 2021. This places the group in a really good position to accelerate its growth bringing forward investments in its technology, acquiring more brands and increasing our operational capabilities in this coming year. Um, David will now take you through the different segments. Um, thank you, David. Thanks, Eva. So uh, just to, to recap, the, the Chinese market is obviously a very large market. It's uh, if you take the next 10 markets uh, and, and add those together, you don't quite reach the, the Chinese e-commerce market. It's also, I think, fair to say, by far the most advanced in terms of penetration. Over half of retail transactions will occur online in China this year, according to eMarketer. Uh, and and the, the pace of change and innovation in China is, is far ahead of anything that we, we see in, in, in Western markets. Uh, as a result, it's, it's obviously a very attractive market, but it's a very uh, complex market. And so what we've done is build a, uh, a range of managed services and uh, technology that make this market more accessible to, to international merchants from translation, logistics, on-platform marketing, store operations, data analytics, payments, etc. And this is all powered through uh, Nomad, which is integrated into the necessary touch points for e-commerce in China. Numerous e-commerce platforms exist in China. Timor uh, amongst the, the most dominant, uh, but there are others that appear uh, and, and grow very quickly. Uh, for example, Douyin or, or the Chinese TikTok is an, an example of that. The payments ecosystem in China is very different as well. Uh, the West, Visa and MasterCard used almost exclusively, whereas in China, the opposite is true. Alipay and WeChat Pay, uh, very little penetration of, of Western payment methods. Local delivery partners such as SF Express uh, are, are well known amongst Chinese consumers compared to uh, Western counterparts such as DHL. And uh, the social media landscape in China is, is quite different in terms of the technology, albeit the, the, the trends and um, the techniques are, are quite similar. And then quite critically is uh, the regulatory framework that exists for cross-border sales in China. Uh, in 2014, the Chinese government uh, laid out the initial uh, infrastructure and uh, tech tax tax regime for how they want the uh, this form of commerce to flow uh, going forward. Prior to 2014, it was a um, you know, postal system, difficult to tax and trace. But what our nomad system uh, does is it makes it possible to to use this. Uh, this fully integrated cross-border system, which avails a, a preferential tax rate, but more importantly is how the, the government wants this form of uh, international commerce to flow going forward. On this platform, we essentially have three solutions that we offer to our, our clients and brand partners. The first is our Nomad Storefront solution, which is where we operate stores, uh, e-commerce stores, on the dominant platforms in China, such as uh, Tmall, uh, Little Red Book, et cetera. The second solution that we have for our brand partners is what we call Nomad Distribution, where we're leveraging the social commerce uh, aspect of, of e-commerce in China, which is an enormous and fast growing uh, sector uh, of the market. This is where we're working with local influencers, celebrities, key opinion leaders, um, and through our integrations into platforms such as Yozan on, on WeChat, it allows us to uh, work with these influencers like the, the lady in this video, where she can take the products from our brand partners, put them into her live streams, into her videos, into her social media posts. Her fans and followers can then purchase, uh, and we're able to fulfill those orders directly from our, our UK uh, fulfillment center or from our fulfillment center in the Shanghai free trade zone as well. 
The third solution, which is uh, we're rolling out now, is our checkout for China or Nomad Checkout solution, which is a software as a service product. And this allows brands to convert traffic from China into into sales. It's a low friction, low cost option, so it's it's good for for smaller and niche brands looking to take their first steps into this market. But it's also we also have an enterprise version for uh, for merchants that have existing Chinese uh, customers and want to provide them with a better a better experience of that service. The, the benefits for a Chinese consumer shopping directly on a brand's website are, are significant, guaranteed authenticity, uh, access to a wider range of products, but often the experience is, is quite, quite poor. Um, the first problem being the, the site speed is, is often low uh, and sometimes doesn't work at all. Secondly, unfamiliar payment methods. Most Chinese people uh, use Chinese payment methods, uh, obviously, and most Western websites only accept Western payment methods. So that's the next hurdle that they that they face. Uh, logistics partners for for Western websites, often Western companies, uh, and these are not as well known for for Chinese consumers. And then finally, the the challenges around customs. If you are a merchant selling to Chinese consumers currently, it is most likely that they, you will be doing that through the mail system. That is uh, not the way that uh, it is in, uh, intended to be used going forward. The stoppage rates are are high, between thirty to fifteen to thirty percent, and that results in a, a very poor experience for the consumer who has to pay a higher tax rate and have the aggravation of uh, having goods released from customs if they are stopped. And it's difficult for the the merchants to have to deal with these uh, complaints and customer service issues. So, uh, Nomad Checkout is a piece of technology that solves all of these issues in a, in a single in a single product. When it comes to the site speed, we uh, optimize that uh, at the point that the site is loaded, so that a in China experiences a Western website in the same way that they would experience a Chinese website, stripping out all those blocked technologies resulting in the in the site loading in this example five seconds versus 50 seconds uh, the consumer is then made aware that they will be able to pay with their Chinese payment methods and uh, will receive their products from uh, a well-known Chinese delivery partner uh, they can then shop the site as they normally would and complete the payment uh, through our, our checkout which is optimally optimized for a Chinese uh, consumer uh, it takes the necessary uh, information for a Chinese delivery through the integrated cross-border route, and it allows them to pay for their goods using the Chinese payment method, either Alipay or WeChat Pay. Behind the scenes, what's happening is we, through our integrations uh, with, with customers ports in China, the order is uh, pre-registered uh, and pre-cleared. So when it arrives at the, the port of entry, it goes straight through, and this results in a much faster delivery time, 15 days uh, on average for um, goods coming in uh, through the postal system versus eight days using our solution. And the stoppage rate is much low, lower, anywhere from 15 to 30% using the postal system down to uh, roughly 1% using our, our solution. So uh, it has a big, big impact on both the consumer and, and the merchant. And it's very easy for the merchant to, to get up and running with this product. It, uh, it's a few lines of code uh, to install on a Shopify site, site for example, and then a uh, some configuration change, no co no code change required to enable the site speed optimization. And then from a workflow point of view, it fits right in. The orders flow into the into the merchant's back office as they would any other international order, uh, and then we consolidate those and send them to to the fine wall delivery uh, in China. The other part of the Nomad platform, especially valuable to merchants who have been in China, see the value in the level of uh, visibility that we can provide them, is uh, our Nomad Analytics. It allows the merchants to see where their products are being sold, how much for, uh, to whom, uh, where stock levels exist, and, and also uh, where we have integrations into Chinese social media platforms for them to be able to see uh, how their social media following is, is progressing a level of visibility that they would expect from any other international market, but they've traditionally not had for, for the Chinese market. So those are the uh, core uh, components of the, the Nomad technology solution. Uh, what we've identified is uh, the opportunity also to take brands that we see in the West that have low or no growth, uh, but high growth opportunities in, in China, 
and put those into our into our networks, into our into our technology, using our market knowledge and intel, and to rapidly increase the revenue and, and the value of those brands. The first case study we have of this is is ProBio Seven, which we acquired towards the end of 2017. Growth has been steady, as you can see in the top graph, until we introduce this into our, our China e-commerce sales towards the end of FY20, where we see a real explosive growth at 1.7 million in, in China in 2020, which you know, exceeds the revenue that we'd, we'd seen from this brand in UK retail and its domestic market. We believe that there's opportunities to expand this uh, model. In fact, we completed the first acquisition post-IPO in, in May of a complementary health brand, Zeta West. Uh, Zeta, Zeta West herself is a well-known, uh, renowned specialist on IVF and assisted reproductive therapy. Uh, her clinics in London have amongst the highest success rates uh, in China. Falling birth rates uh, have led to China becoming the, the, the number one user of assisted reproductive therapy uh, and these this range of products are designed to support that we see huge potential for this uh, in the market we've worked with the brand for some time and now that we have uh, integrated it into our group uh, we are will be launching in china uh, this this quarter on Timor global uh, and um, we're very much looking forward to to driving this 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 brand forward along with probar 7 and also exploring any other complementary brand acquisitions in the growing kind of health beauty portfolio that we that we are developing. So just talk a little bit now about the market uh, and the environment in which we operate. It's somewhat different to Western e-commerce and Western markets. Like most businesses, there's been some operational challenges during the pandemic, but we've we've navigated those without too much disruption. Um, I think what's more relevant now is we start to either live with with coronavirus or a move on for it is is what structural changes that, that it's brought about. Um, generally, this has been a, a boon for e-commerce globally um, and has led to you know, increased digitalization in many aspects of, of life. Uh, in China, where e-commerce already accounts for 50% of, of transactions, uh, there was a similar surge uh, towards the start of last quarter one last year, which we definitely benefited from. Um, one of the, one of the uh, impacts that we're starting to see on a, on a flip side is that the almost complete cessation of, uh, of overseas travel by Chinese tourists has meant uh, uh, that uh, a lot of overseas retailers that, that once experienced high levels of Chinese tourist uh, foot traffic are not seeing that anymore. Um, it's un, unclear how long that will, will last for and how long that will take to resume. On the one hand, that creates uh, some, some very interesting opportunities for us because uh, e-commerce is, is obviously a way to, to reach those customers. Uh, on the other side, uh, this outbound tourism is, has tr traditionally been a, a way for small and medium-sized brands to be discovered uh, by by Chinese consumers. And what we've seen is some of the domestic brands starting to uh, fill that gap over the last 12 months, more in the fashion space, but in some categories that typically weren't as strong for, for Chinese brands, such as uh, skincare and beauty as well. The other thing that's been in the news recently, obviously, is, is uh, regulation, and uh, particularly around China big tech. This uh, affects some of the platforms in which we operate on, particularly Alibaba has been uh, one of the, the companies involved in the recent you know, regulatory framework, but that has, has not had any direct impact on us. Um, obviously, regulation in, in China is, uh, is something we keep a very close eye on. We have a retained specialist lawyer to, to look at this, particularly from a, an e-commerce point of view. Um, ultimately, what, what the problem that we solve is um, one of um, making things more compliant with Chinese regulations. So uh, in that respect, we don't see any direct threats from this currently, and uh, platforms on which we work have not been affected in, in, in as far as we have experienced. So um, we are not nervous uh, at all about, about any changes in, in respect to that. One of the things that the Chinese market is quite different to the Western markets is just how fast it changes and how much innovation is, is happening in this market. 
one of the things that's that's really great example of this is is uh, the live stream commerce uh, developments, which four years ago didn't didn't really exist. Uh, Alibaba did their first live stream in 2016, and in 2017 it was a three or four billion dollar market. Um, this year that's going to be close to 300 billion dollars. Um, to put into some context, if uh, if live stream e-commerce sellers were their own country, they would now be the third largest e-commerce market in the world. And that's all happened in, in, a, in a few years, really. So the, the, the rate of change and the way in which that um, those changes can take hold is, is quite unlike anything we see in the West. And we've seen firsthand some traffic, some of the, the traffic changes uh, from platforms like Tmall uh, and, and WeChat on which we operate towards platforms such as Douyin, which is the, the kind of the TikTok of China. Um, we've been able to adapt quite quickly. Uh, we have now completed integration into Douyin uh, and we're actually preparing for the launch of our first store on that platform uh, in the coming months. Um, this whole live stream commerce is a, is a medium that's been quite central to our growth um, and we've built our capabilities uh, in this regard. I think. What's now interesting is to see this medium of, of live streaming starting to uh, expand outside of China into other parts of, of Asia uh, and, and indeed the West. And I think we're quite uniquely positioned uh, with this format as a Western company. Uh, and I don't think it'll be too long until we see uh, some of these, these trends, uh, technologies and, and, and techniques start to become a significant part of, of e-commerce in markets outside of China, which, which I think represents a, a quite exciting future opportunity for us as a business as well. In terms of our focus for the year ahead, uh, we raised uh, just over twice what we were intending to. Um, so we have uh, made the decision to bring forward some of the investment into the Nomad technology products uh, and functionality on an accelerated timeframe. We have the other key area of focus for us is to start to roll out our checkout solution. Focusing on enterprise clients to begin with, but uh, SME merchants are a key part of the, of the strategy with that product as well. Uh, the other area of focus for us will be uh, upgrading and upselling our existing clients that we operate stores for on platforms such as uh, WeChat and uh, through our Nomad distribution onto uh, platforms such as Tmall, uh, and do in as well when we're able to offer that as, as well as a solution. Partnerships uh, with key players in the cross-border ecosystem. We already have a very strong partnership and partner in, in SF Express, uh, but we will be looking to develop other partnerships with other parts of the ecosystem, for example, in payments uh, as, a, as, a, as a strategic uh, focus for this year ahead. And we also see the, uh, the opportunity for further acquisitions in, in a complementary space to those that we've already made, and also strategic assets that may enhance our technology and uh, e-commerce service uh, solutions as well. So just as a, a summary on the, the year that's just passed, we've had a very strong financial performance, uh, revenue increasing 116% uh, like for like, and a uh, improving gross margin. We've had we've made good progress uh, post period as well towards our objectives. Uh, international expansion is is well underway. Uh, acquisition that we've made is is well integrated and performing uh, very well for us. Uh, and the uh, operational uh, capabilities uh, that we intended to invest in are also happening. Uh, our team in China has expanded to be able to provide more services uh, to uh, existing clients and be able to onboard new clients as well. The investment in the Nomad technology platform is, is happening at pace. We have significantly increased the development capability both in the UK and in China to give us a uh, wider coverage uh, and take advantage of the, the opportunities that we see coming towards us uh, with, this, with this solution. Any future M&A activity will be in line with our strategy so far. So focusing around health, particularly and, uh, and wellness and uh, beauty, which are the areas in which we're, we're, we're very strong uh, and continue to, to, to uh, improve on. And I think the other 
The other thing for the, the further outlook is that we're very well positioned uh, for future growth in obviously in China, but in potentially other markets as well, as we see uh, the trends that are, are happening. I think in some ways it would be fair to say many years in advance of, of Western markets. And we, we have a, uh, a unique position uh, in that respect as well. And I, that, that will, I believe, lead to, to many more opportunities for us going forward. Thank you very much. David, do you have any closing remarks? Uh, just thank you for, for everyone's everyone's time. Um, we're very very proud of what we've achieved over the last uh, financial year, and uh, we're very much looking forward to continuing this uh, journey. And uh, yeah, I hope uh, people will, will will continue to take interest, and uh, we look forward to making further announcements and further updates in in the not too distant future as well.